So now that we have finished all our baking, we can save our document with a, a new version here, version two, and I will get rid of the useless sculpt and the useless cage here. I will move this to the first layer. And we will start working on our painting here. So we will start with really uh, basic color and then using uh, cycles and the node editor we'll try to construct as complex as possible um, diffuse uh, map and also roughness map etc so that you can output uh, your low poly shield uh, to whatever PBR uh, real-time rendering engine you want like Sketchfab for example. So I, I got rid of everything. Here what I like to do is to have a camera so it's already set. Have a camera view here and add a plane which will mimic the ground. Enter rendering mode like this. Go into the node editor to check our shield material here. And we will add a simple shader, diffuse shader for the time being. And I will get rid of everything. And now I will switch here to the world material. Uh, by default, use node is not enabled. So just click it so that I have this now. And I will press Ctrl T to add automatically a texture uh, node setup here, thanks to the node renderer. And we will open the HDR image, which goes with these tutorial files and it will automatically uh, add this HDR. So we'll keep a simple HDR shading uh, because I don't want to use a three point shading or something that will kind of uh, uh, fake something or, or, or give an orientation or a specific mood to our lightning. Uh, using uh, this um, lightning setup with an HDR will give us some nice reflection and that's going to be enough for us to set correctly our diffuse map uh, and stuff like this. We are not aiming for a nice cycles rendering here. We are, uh, we are aiming for good texturing. Once this is done, you're, it's up to you to play with the envir environment shading uh, to get something better. So here I will just rotate my shading on the Z axis so that the source of light will kind of come from this point here instead of coming from the, the back of the picture. So if I rotate it on the Z axis, we can see here the shadow changing. So by 180 degrees here, I can clearly see the lightning coming from this point of view. Let's try 230. Yeah, maybe a little less, 200 and, and 10. Yeah, like this is cool. I have this uh, shadow area and this uh, light area. So I have a nice and even lightning setup here. And that's going to be enough for the time being. Now, in the UV image editor, create a new picture that we will call uh, let's say shield base color for the time being and we'll use a 248 2048 by 2048 UV map that will be empty. Okay, let's save this F3 and press save here. And now in the node editor, make sure you right click here your shield, select the object here and add here an input, uh, sorry, a texture, image texture, select the shield base color. Now 
in 3D view, if I switch to texture view mode, I will see my texture here that is totally black. I will now switch to texture paint mode, use this option here, and will select only the wooden part, pressing L. So first of all, we'll play with the wood here. So we'll use a slightly uh, brownish color, like this. And here I have the palette that is enabled, that allow me to create, uh, to save and store colors. So for example, I'm uh, searching for a wood color here. I will use the fill brush. In the option, we'll keep the bleeding at 20 and try to catch a not too saturated brownish color like this, not too reddish. Click the plus button and fill our area here. Now I will just slightly add a lighter color on the top surface. So I will use the uh, draw brush here, make this color a little brighter and a little less saturated like this. I will use the strength. I will store the color. That's always good to have. And so the strength here is a little too much. We'll be able to play with the color later on. I just want to have a, a nice base color. So we, we are not aiming for something 100% uh, realistic. This is not my style. I prefer stylized uh, texturing. But in the method, it's the same when you want to make something really uh, realistic. But you may have made um, a more realistic sculpting on your base mesh for sure. And then use more of uh, map sourcing instead of end painting like this, using stamp and paint uh, based on, on, on photo, photo based, sorry, uh, painting. So now I will select this color that I have stored, make it slightly darker and slightly more saturated, store it, and I will just paint So if you start to try to paint some wooden uh, things uh, on this, will it match what we have baked before? You can't be sure of this. So that might not be a very good idea. Okay. So now <clears throat> I will add a base color to those other areas. So I uncheck everything, select these nails here and I will go for a gray with a very slightly bluish color. I will now make it slightly brighter. Oh. Let's go to the UV image editor and press Alt S to save this. And now we'll be playing uh, with our other maps. So we'll use the node editor to do so and start adding our AO and uh, cavity map to give our object other colors. What we will do is that now we will um, search for some nice uh, wood texture. Uh, a seamless texture is better. So I go to texture.com. Uh, you have a bunch, a bunch of incredible textures for free. Uh, and you can you you have 15 free credit uh, every day. So it used to be uh, CG textures, which uh, is really well known. 
So I've uh, been in texture, wood, rough, and use the first one. I won't be uh, in this one. I won't be linking it into the the tutorial because I'm not supposed to uh, uh, distribute those. But you can get them pretty, uh, pretty uh, simply and use them. So just go and, and open an account. By default, when you are using a texture, I will control shift to click this. Uh, if Blender find the UV map coordinates here, uh, it will use it for your object to be shaded. Okay, so if I control shift to click the diffuse map here uh, to plug it and press control T, I will get this UV mapping node and image texture uh, node here. And if I plug this directly into it, I will get exactly the same result. So you don't need to uh, plug the UV. But I like to do it to make it clear for me that I'm using the UV for this picture, for example. And when uh, you have a lot of different pictures used in your node editor, you will uh, more easily find uh, your base texture uh, this way. So now we'll load a new one. Uh, and I will give it a slightly brownish color here that looks like the wood. And now I will load this new uh, texture we have uh, downloaded. So I will test both. So it's here. If I control shift to click, I can see it using the UV map here. And I will duplicate this one and open the second one. So this time I will use a vector mapping node before and I will still use the UV instead of using a generated as we have nice UV map we can uh, easily isolate uh, this area and as you can see there is no stretching on the wooden area so uh, we can use the UV coordinates and I will plug both here we will uh, first now plug our AO before playing with those color here. So let's duplicate this and open the shield AO. I will duplicate it, plug the UV and load the cavity map. And now let's mix them with the base color mix RGB so that will uh, give us the direction of the wooden pattern so that we can then mix those upon it more easily. So let's see how it looks with the shield AO. So for the AO I will be up to darkening those areas so I will probably use multiply for example or darken. Let's try multiply here and push it to the maximum. So it already looks uh, pretty nice. Let's see what we have. I like color burn, but I don't know if it's, yeah, it does work the way I expect. So now I will reduce the strength. Mm. It gives us a, a slightly too saturated color. But what we can do is set it to, let's say, 0 0.15, duplicate this here, and add here again our AO, but with the multiply option this time, and increase the strength. So that I have the, the saturation here that is increased, and uh, here the dark, darken effect of the AO. And now let's duplicate this and switch it to overlay and use our dot map here. And you will see that we'll get a pretty nice result uh, really, really fast. So it, it brings the, the finer detail here. So let's uh, push it a little more. And now we can use here a converter color ramp. I will select it. When you press M, you can mute 
the node and see uh, the difference with and without it. M here with, without and with. So I'd like the the light, I, I'd like it to be a little more contrasted. So let's push the black a little more and the white a little more like this. Okay, so we've started with this, added some uh, saturation with the AO, darkening a little those area, and then with the overlay, give it uh, more contrast and more definition uh, toward our wooden pattern. I will slightly decrease this. So we are already kind of changing the, the our shield base color, and that's what we want. So now I can compare the flow here of this wooden pattern or this wooden pattern with this. So I can see that I will have to rotate the wooden pattern. So let's say we, oh, I'm really hesitating because this one looks uh, really more interesting, but there is a lot of, um, very defined creases that we have sculpted before and I'm afraid it doesn't blend uh, perfectly. So what I will do is I will duplicate this because the rotation and the scale won't be the same for those two colors. So let's compare again. I need to rotate it by 90 degree probably on the z-axis. Yeah, that's it. And now let's mix those. So I will choose overlay again, select the color here and click this and you can see that it really uh, improved our map. If I mute it here, it really give this, this kind of uh, wood uh, style uh, to, I don't know how to say it, but wooden feeling to our uh, shield and also slightly slightly warmer and more interesting for us. So I, I do believe that we can use this one. Let's just rotate this map by 80 degrees also and really make it smaller. So I will increase the scale here. Now it looks like uh, something more uh, interesting here. I will duplicate this so that we can uh, currently compare and see how it looks. So it looks a little finer, it looks pretty natural, maybe 5 is a, a bit too big, let's try 3 here or even 2.5. So it gives us a more subtle result. Uh, which is also interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I kind of prefer it because it's it's more subtle, so it doesn't kill all the work made by the sculptor, uh, which was me. <laughs> uh, and we can play with the tone to get something warmer if we want. Also, uh, notice that here uh, we are using an emission shader to sh to to see. Uh, the, this map. So it looks like it's already shaded because we are using the AO etc. But it's not. So when we will plug it into the diffuse and add some glossiness, you see it start to look uh, a little colder and darker. But I really like uh, this wooden color. So I will keep it this way for the time being. So using the second map here, so this is going to be uh, the first layer of our base color. So we will now add uh, some painting to it. I have to test it first and then we'll go uh, with the metal part and start uh, playing with the glossiness that will really uh, give our material uh, some more depth and also add the normal map.